Hey folks, I'm gonna show you today how I applied Unity's Edge Detection Shader onto specific objects in my scene. Now, uh, Unity's Edge Detection Shader is a screen space shader. What does that mean? It means that Unity's Edge Detection is applied at the very end of a frame, upon the final image, after everything was rendered and put together. Uh, on my screen you can currently see the solution in action and if we turn my version off and um, apply Unity's screen space edge detection shader out of the box we end up with something like this. Especially the trees look beautiful like this. So, how do we do that? For realizing object-wise edge detection the way I did it, we'll have to do the following steps. First, we'll put our edge detected game objects into separate layers. Then, we'll set up a rendering with two cameras and at the end, we'll write a little shader for our edge detection. In my case, uh, the game objects I want to have edge detection upon are my buildings. You see this uh, keep here, for example. Um, I therefore put all of my buildings in a separate layer called edges. So make sure you create a new layer, call it, for example, edges and add all game objects to it on which you want to shadow to show uh, your edges. Secondly, we have to set up our two camera render system. So create a new camera. Um, in my case, this camera is called the buildings camera. Make sure you have your culling mask on edges. Uh, this means that uh, we are only going to render our game objects which are in the edges layer, so in my case only my buildings. Um, also make sure that your edges, uh, your depth on this camera is lower than on the main camera. So in my case I have a minus one and for the main camera I have a zero. Then attach the main camera as a child to this newly created camera. The main camera needs for the clear flags either skybox or solid color and we'll, and here we'll render everything so just uh, click everything on your culling mask. Uh, again make sure that your depth here on the main camera is now higher than at the building's camera. Great! So we're off to the main part now, uh, we'll write our little shader. But first, let's start off by creating a script for our newly created camera, in my case the buildings camera. I called it HRT, uh, which is short for Edge Render Target. Let's have a look at it. It is a simple script. Uh, it only does three things. Uh, it tells the camera to only render depth and normals. It's the only input we need for detecting edges. Then we generate the render texture against which the edges only camera will render. Thirdly, in uh, this update loop. It checks for changes in window size so that we can adjust our render textures width and height uh, if necessary. Also as a side note um, it registers this render texture as a global shader texture but this is not important uh, for our case. Make sure you attach HRT 
the HRT script uh, to the first camera. And uh, that's it for this script. Now you, we, we can create a shader based on templates Unity provides for you. In our case, we are interested in a surface shader. Um, we changed this shader a little. Oh. There we go. Um, we apply Unity's edge detection logic to change a fragment's, uh, respectively a pixel's color based on whether it is an edge or not. I will provide you with the shader script, of course, but let's still quickly go through it. This is the standard setup for a new surface shader and we will have a look at uh, uh, my changed shader which is almost the same there are just a few ch uh, small changes to it so we give four additional properties uh, to the shader besides the four already given uh, sensitivity depth and sensitivity normals is um, how sensitive the shader is towards changes in our testing locations for detecting an edge. Uh, these numbers work for me, maybe they, uh, they have to be different numbers for you. The sample distance is just how far off these, these samples are for detecting whether it is an edge or not. Those also exist in uh, Unity's edge detection shader. And a last one which we add is uh, the falloff method, uh, falloff uh, input, which determines um, how fast the black edges will vanish with distance. Mm -hmm. Then we add to this pragma line um, an, a, a final color function. We call this function edge color. It will calculate um, the the edge for us, and and um, draw and make the, the fragment turn black if if it actually is an edge. Here we access in camera depth normal texture the de the depth normals texture that we created with the first camera. You can access your depth normals texture here whichever way you want, yet uh, Unity conveniently already stores the last rendered depth normals texture in this global shader property. Further down, we add another of Unity's standard inputs, which, is autom which automatically um, is filled for us, uh, the screen pause input. Just add it and it will work out of the box. Unity has a great docs, docs for, for such uh, inputs. The check same um, function is, is exactly, is, is a copy paste of uh, Unity's edge detection shader. It returns a 1 if the two input depths and normals are the same, otherwise a 0. Have a read if you wish, it is fairly simple and easy to understand. And uh, here I commented out instancing support because I don't need it, but maybe you do. Now already the last bit of change we do to this surface, surface uh, shader template is to insert our final color function. It works similar to what Unity already provides. We calculate the three uh, screen UV positions we want to sample in order to detect whether it is an edge or not. We get it from our uh, uh, camera, that we get the, the samples from our camera depth normals texture and uh, further down, we use the checksame from Unity 
to check whether our samples form an edge or not. Further, uh, we calculate a fading, this fading effect based on falloff for uh, the black edges. It, uh, as mentioned, it will dampen the opacity of the black edges with increasing distance. And it's a nice looking effect, but maybe you don't want this in your scene. That's up to you. And uh, that's it. We're done. We could discuss many things about this approach, but let me highlight three things. Uh, there are many approaches to tackle object-specific edge detection, so why did I choose this one? Um, three reasons mainly. There is uh, no fighting with shadows, no only shadow, uh, no shadow only mesh duplicates, and no such acrobatics. It's just a shader. That is one reason. Secondly, um, the changes in shader or, or properties are instantly visible. That's very nice for development. And uh, there's a lot of copy paste uh, of already working Unity code. So it's, it, it was an easy basis. An alternative, um, would what I would love to see, is uh, a baking of a texture atlas. So what you could do is use, uh, for example, Unity's calculated light mapping UVs, uh, which you can uh, ca calculate for your objects, for example, when, when you import them to Unity, and then at game start go through all the game objects edges and draw the edges onto this separate texture atlas. Like this we can alleviate the burden of constant edge detection calculations and just apply our baked textures onto our game objects. Uh, very runtime friendly. Lastly there are aliasing issues with our current solution. Uh, let's have a closer look. I uh, personally don't mind in my case, but implementing some anti-aliasing directly in the shader, for example with a 3x3 box filter, would probably ramp up the runtime costs of the shader significantly. I have not yet come up with a good solution, but if you have an idea, please feel free to comment. And by the way, with the texture atlas approach, you would of course not have these issues at all.